Let's react to Amala's video called We Are Killing Natural Beauty. I see different celebrities, young women, talking about body modifications that they're undergoing, different drugs that they're taking, plastic surgeries. They're like Ozampic, maybe. That's been a big one. Then we had the buckle fat removal surgery trend. I've invested in my body. I have a $150,000 body, four BBLs technically five BBLs. Remember that BBL is actually one of the most dangerous plastic surgeries because if you get the fat into a deeper vein, sometimes that fat can travel into the heart and the lungs causing big problems. From buckle fat removal to ozempic shots. That's what I was saying. Veneers. I find that the veneers end up a bit too white and they look quite artificial. I know one of my friends, uh, Dr. Alex, shout out Dr. Alex, he's my dentist too. He talks about not making the color too white, you know, too artificial because then it just looks fake. And I know this has been happening in Hollywood and in celebrity and with Instagram models. The crazy thing is that some of the Instagram models these days are just like AI models. They're not even real people. And sometimes they make it really obvious and they say like this is an AI model and people still, you know, like, follow and sometimes even give money maybe on OnlyFans where they give money to these people who are or these computer programs that are, you know, they're not real. And that is always extremely surprising. Ozempic is taking Hollywood by storm with people like Oprah Winfrey, Sharon Osbourne, Mindy Kaling admitting to being on weight loss drugs. And the results are questionable, but we We'll get to that. Buckle fat removal also seems to be a major trend. We've covered Ozempic at length with uh, one popular video. We've also had many videos on buckle fat removal. So make sure to check out those when you get a chance. We know that guys are getting plastic surgery to make themselves taller. Yeah, the leg extension surgeries. That's pretty surprising to me that people are doing that. It's a long recovery period, potential for a lot of risk. But listen, guys can be uh, quite insecure about their height sometimes. So for some, it might be worth it. And people think that patients only travel to Turkey for like their hair transplants, you know, for their uh, dental uh, work, but they actually also go there for uh, leg lengthening too, in addition to, of course, other places. The body modification industry to me is getting out of control. And this is not to necessarily place judgment on the celebrities and individuals who choose to get these procedures. No, I mean, it is placing judgment on those people by questioning why they're doing it. We're placing judgment on them. And I think that everyone has a point where they're like, okay, things are okay until you do X, right? And whether you're a plastic surgeon, whether you're just a person out there making decisions for yourself about, you know, what you know, you find acceptable as far as a body modification, everyone makes that decision for themselves. And then potentially in my position for, for patients too. So I'll tell you where I draw the line. Um, in addition to some of the surgeries I talk about that I don't enjoy doing and that I don't, you know, fully support like buckle fat removal, unless, you know, for a very narrow type of candidate. But for example, body modification, when it comes to people uh, putting you know, horns in their in their face, or removing digits, you know, there are people who surprisingly do this, uh, what I think crazy stuff, chopping off their ears, chopping off their nose for a certain look. And this is where, um, you know, I have this problem because that's when you start to get into like functionality change. So when you're affecting function in that way, just for an aesthetic appearance, I think that's when you get into a problematic area. So, so that's just, you know, kind of where I tend to draw the line. But for some people, you know, even putting on makeup is not a great way to go. Like Pamela Anderson, right, is going fully bare face now for most uh, appearances and not even applying makeup. Is that to say that everyone who applies makeup is, uh, is being fake and artificial? I don't know, some people might believe that, most people don't, right? So it's kind of like, where do you draw that line? And it can be a very subjective uh, personal decision. It's how flippantly people are referring to plastic surgery solutions when it comes to beauty. You think you're too fat? Just get on Ozempic. Well, remember, Ozempic um, is not plastic surgery, so just to make that clear. In general, you should definitely seek out procedures or solutions that are less invasive first before jumping to like a surgical solution. That being said, sometimes surgery first is actually a safer and better way to go. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I've covered it in one video about, for example, nasal filler versus actual rhinoplasty surgery. There are situations where um, nasal filler is not the best way to start if you're trying to see how your nose might look differently with like, you know, a procedure, right? Sometimes rhinoplasty is 
is the better choice. And as I talk about in that video, it comes down to if you're reducing your nose versus adding volume to augment your nose. Most people who want a rhinoplasty look to get their nose a bit smaller in parts. So if you're now adding filler, you're actually making the nose bigger, even if it's a little straighter. So it's not always the best way to go. Similarly, lip filler versus, for example, lip lifts, right? I do a lot of lip lift surgery, as you guys know, but many patients who come to me, they either don't want to get into filler because they know that the stuff can migrate. You can potentially get vascular occlusions with other bad problems, and they don't like that ducky type of look. So if you're looking to get some enhancement to your lip, but you want to avoid that fake appearance, oftentimes a lip lift is a nice solution, even though it's surgical and it carries some surgical risks. So again, there's a lot of nuance here. Never mind the fact that a medical professional professional has to quite literally grind down your teeth in order to place these veneers on you. Doesn't sound exciting to me either. <laughs> How many celebrities are you seeing these days and recognizing something doesn't quite look right? They maybe look skeletal due to the Ozempic shots. And also the buckle fat removal. Or their teeth look like something out of an AI robot rather than a real human due to the veneers. Maybe our robots one day will look more natural than the actual humans walking around. We'll see. Not to mention the fact that I think it's making us lose sight of what natural beauty beauty really looks like. None of these celebrity faces had any problems, in my opinion, to begin with. And what really startles me is when you go and look at these before and after pictures of celebrity faces after they've undergone all of these different treatments, their before picture is full of character and unique quirks and just total natural beauty. But imagine if that same person, whether it's a celebrity or anyone else, was often ridiculed for the way that they looked. And granted that we might ridicule them in the post-op period as well, or, you know, with their post-op look. But, you know, many of these people have, uh, you know, had like lots of comments uh, thrown their way uh, about how they look and their appearance. And if they're a notable figure, then imagine how many tabloids were, you know, written about them, like looking a certain way. And eventually that starts to affect someone's psyche and they're looking for solutions to uh, potentially change their appearance and uh, maybe even look more like the norm for this time period, even if the norm in, say, Hollywood is starting to look a bit odd in some ways. But if they're gaining, you know, in popularity, they might want to look more like that norm, however strange that norm might end up being. These young girls and boys who are going to be watching these celebrities and thinking that this is something to aspire to, when in fact it really is killing the character in their faces. At the end of the day, I mean, again, I have the vantage point of, you know, being a plastic surgeon and actually performing some of these procedures and seeing people on the other end of it. And the overall satisfaction rates are extremely high if the patients are selected properly with the right care and attention to detail and you know doing good surgery and that often leads to quite natural and good results that people are happy with so I understand wanting to sound the alarm and saying like you know are we all moving in the right direction here as a society but also realize that well-executed surgery is first of all hard to detect and can lead to a very um satisfied patient who honestly does look quite good afterwards. And my body is just perfect the way that it is, that it doesn't need to be altered. I don't need to worry about anti-aging. And then in fact, my body's natural progression of aging and gaining all of its little quirks and characteristics is what human life is about. I do think that's a wonderful approach. And I honestly hope that one day I don't have to do any of the procedures that I actually offer and that everyone will just be fully accepting of their bodies and their faces and how they look and that would be a wonderful thing I think you know that's not I don't think completely realistic I think there are more people than than not who feel like you know the as they age as they get older as they lose their hair as they get more wrinkles as they start to sag that that then impacts how they think about themselves how other people view them the different opportunities that might be available to them and just you know wanting to look and feel their best many of my patients who are older you know they feel quite young inside and when they look in the mirror and they see this different form of themselves they feel like 
like they don't recognize that person. So they might want to tweak some things to look like their younger self. So I think it's great that she has this uh, opinion now, and I hope that she can sustain that as she ages and everything starts to change. But time will tell. I wake up most mornings and put makeup on my face. That's an alteration, although I view it to be less invasive. It surely is less invasive, but it is an alteration nonetheless. But I myself am on my own journey when it comes to self-confidence and worrying about... I think a lot of this comes down to risk tolerance. You know, some people are more tolerant of risk than other people. Some people are scared of uh, going under the knife or something or getting a, a needle with some substance injected into their face. And I totally get it. If people find the right, you know, provider, they sh you know, they'll probably have a little bit more trust than that. But even so, you know, I, I get it. It's just the risk reward type of, uh, you know, kind of balancing act. And, you know, it's hard to find people that, that you can trust. And, uh, you know, for some people, it's just no matter even if they're going to quote unquote the best for whatever procedure it might be, they might still be too scared to undergo that even if they really want um, the aesthetic change. And that's a big part of this. How much risk are we willing to take with our own bodies? You have to learn to cut out the noise. I think real beauty comes in a self-confidence and acceptance of oneself, but also the pursuit of a healthy mind and body. For sure, that's always going to be more critical to really accept oneself with the way you look and everything. I'll also say that I agree with her that there's a lot of uh, marketing out there. You know, people putting a lot of money, companies putting a lot of money into promoting a certain drug that they sell or a certain procedure that they offer. And um, all of that is, you know, hitting our eyeballs and, and competing for our attention online and on all these different social media apps. So, you know, there's a lot of that going on. So trying to put all of that, you know, aside and trying to really kind of like uh, grapple with yourself and figure out what do you really want? What do you really need to look and feel mostly feel as 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 positive, as confident as you possibly can. No matter what you look like, there's always going to be a new trend, a new body type, a new procedure, a new way to alter your face. And you can be thrown around like a rag doll, constantly trying to chase these things like you're in a perpetual game of operation. Yeah, I mean, just uh, as a side note here, there's a lots of new, especially technologies that are coming out all the time. And often they're not fully tested. And I don't mean they may have gotten FDA approval. I don't mean on that front. But um, even if they're FDA approved, they may not have been around for that long. They may not have been able to yet stand the test of time. And so often they're put out there as this latest, greatest trend. And the companies want to promote it. They get doctors on board to promote their new tools. And all these different people are going under for um, a procedure, let's say, and, and and they're getting it done. And then we find out years later that, hey, you know what? The results are uh, subpar, that they're losing fat in their face, for example, like uh, from all therapy or some other gadget is hurting them down the road. And then people get you know upset with that technology and then eventually kind of fades uh, from popularity um, until the new thing comes back. So it's very important to not just jump into something that's like a new technology or a new technique and to first like see how it does in the marketplace and, and just uh, over over time and seeing if it's truly a safe, effective way to go. Not just jump into it because it's the latest, greatest thing. And I do find it hard to believe, as much as people talk about it, that these operations truly fix the underlying insecurity that leads you to seek them out in the first place. For most of my patients, this is the case, exactly what she's saying. There's usually a more kind of pinpoint approach for patients who are doing this for, I would say, the right reasons. It's not that there's a thousand things about themselves that, that they don't like, but it's usually that there's one, maybe two things that is really bothering them. And maybe people keep pointing out that like, hey, this person is, you know, too bald. This person's you know, lip is too long. This person's face is just too saggy looking, you know, that when they address that, they really do feel much better about themselves. But of course, you have, uh, you know, certain people where they're abusing, you know, the plastic surgeries that are potentially available to them and they might be addicted to that and really they need to look more um, inward you know before getting anything more done. I think we can all collectively agree right now, hopefully, that none of this is necessary. And unfortunately, it seems like these negative influences are only going to continue to grow. For sure. This is, um, by definition, elective procedures, whether it's actual surgery or a non-surgical type of approach. You know, these are elective procedures. No one actually needs them.
you know, so I think she is right in saying that. But also keep in mind that many of the surgeries that exist, um, even uh, just in general, just like when you look at all the surgeries being done around the world, forget about plastic surgery for a second, most of them are elective, meaning that let's say it's an orthopedic surgery to help your shoulder, you know, move a little bit better or, you know, some like surgery for your sinuses that help that helps you breathe better it's still technically an elective surgery not like a life or death surgery so that's something that also i think is is good to keep in mind that we have many surgeries out there that are a little bit more for just enhancing the quality of life rather than uh prolonging life. I think these topics about what is natural beauty and how much body modification is too much is something that's super interesting and we need to have more discourse about these types of topics. And when I listen to podcasts, when I look at what people are actually talking about when they interview, you know, certain popular figures, this is rarely a topic that comes up, even though you do have videos such as these that bring up these topics. So I would love to have podcast style discussion with various people, including maybe some of these YouTubers, to really dive deep into what might be the reason for people wanting these various procedures and where are we going with all this? What does the future look like? I think these are super interesting topics and I think there's a different truth for every person and that's just kind of how it is for you know for us as individuals and i think we should talk about this more and it's something that i think is under discussed at the moment i think amala did a great job of reminding us that it's important to love ourselves and to accept our own appearance and to really think twice before jumping into different types of body modifications i think that's a very healthy message and it's something that is worth reminding ourselves from time to time